to having some guests here with us. Uh, we're lucky to have Ty and Randy up here. Guys, can you just start us off with a little bit of introduction? Who are you? I'm Randy Ermacher uh, with Farm in South Central Nebraska. Uh, corn and soybean farmers, a uh, little over 4,000 acres uh, with my brother and my son. So it's family farm and uh, it just, I guess that's what we do. It's a uh, corn soybean, a typical farm in Nebraska. Some irrigation and some non-irrigated both. So get a little taste of each. Yeah. What about your farm? You bet. I'm, I'm actually Randy's farm market advisor with FBN. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, Randy and I work together on, on the marketing side and we're here to talk about that today. Yeah. Get, talk, talk to us a little bit about that relationship. I think a lot of people might not know what a, a farm marketing advisor is, so give us a little yeah, taste. Yeah, you bet, I'll describe it. it what, what we do is uh, FBN now has a, a program called Crop, Crop Grain Management, where we uh, provide a recommendation to our farmer customers. From there, the farmer customer can go ahead and make a decision on whether or not he's gonna make the sale or pass or whatever, fits his operation. And the best thing about the program is the fact that Randy and I get to work very closely together on a more personalized relationship. It's not just a blast that goes out. It's not just one recommendation fitting everybody. It is a, a tailored recommendation for Randy. And that's what I think one of the best things about our service. How many farmers do you work with on this? Sure, that, that's a great question. Personally, I work with, with 60 farmers throughout the southern part of Nebraska. Uh, we have, I believe we're up to 25 farm market advisors throughout the country, uh, ranging anywhere from just a few customers to 60, 65. So the, the program is only two years old. Uh, we, like I said, we just started a couple years ago, but we've gone from absolutely nothing, zero, to um, uh, just I believe the last number was just a little over 800 customers in wow. a year and a half. So, it's so grown very quickly. it has grown unbelievably quickly. Wow. Yep. Randy, I am always so curious to hear. I think marketing is such a personal kind of activity for farmers, and I, people have a lot of rituals and a lot of you know uh, kind of almost spiritual ways of going about crop marketing. Tell us a little bit about you know what what was your strategy going into working with Randy or working with Ty sorry what's your strategy well when I first uh, saw the program it's like wow there's a data driven marketing plan out here you know we have all this data coming into uh, FBN they should be the first ones to really know what's going on out in the field and uh, give you a kind of a heads up plus all the flexibility in their contracts you know you can do an HTA a basis contract uh, you know, you do an HTA, comes time to harvest, then you set your basis at uh, any location you want to take your grain to. Uh, this year I took, uh, I guess between the contracts we had, four different locations that, you know, we set the basis on and, and delivered our, our crops to those four different locations. Just the flexibility is great. Yeah. And that's exactly my point from earlier where the recommendation could be tailored to fit the operation of, of Randy's farm because Randy is going to do it different from his next door neighbor. Everybody is different and this, this personal marketing manager that we have that in the relationship that Randy and I have helps us be able to capture what his needs are to fit, best fit his operation. That, that's just it. I mean, every operation is so different you know they can look the same on the outside yep. but they're just not there are so many little variables that go into how somebody needs to market on the farm I mean, it's just like almost anything else on the farm really yep. so what's the relationship like between you two on say a day-to-day -day basis i mean how often do you talk how often are you going through this how involved do you get with each other you know what's what's the level that, when you work with producers what is the level of how often you're communicating with sure them? it's it varies some customers want a lot of, of FaceTime or phone time. Other customers are not necessarily that, uh, don't need as much many touches. And so it's, it's up to me to understand what that need of the farmer is. Randy is, is, is a customer that enjoys the information. He does an unbelievably good job of reading the information himself. And then as he does have questions, he'll, get, he'll reach out to me with, with questions. That's, that's one way, but then as we do formulate a recommendation with an FBN, we'll go ahead and pass that recommendation on to Randy, and then it's my responsibility then to reach out to Randy saying, did you get it? Do you understand it? How can I help you? 
and that's that's how it how it plays out. And Randy does a fantastic job of then usually following the recommendation, and sometimes that's that's a sale in itself is getting the customer to actually push forward with the rec. You know, I'm curious from Randy's perspective, but Zach, I want you to chime in on this as well. So much of this conference is about beating the odds. It's about uh, having a strategy kind of for your business, for your farm as a business. Um, when you look to the next, you know, five years, the next 10 years, other than just making money, making a profit, what kind of strategies do you, do you have for yourself around crop marketing or what kind of goals do you have? You always have a goal of uh, selling in the top tier. You know, the, the marketing's probably the biggest make or break sector of our our farms. You know, you can do everything right, have great crops, but if you can't market that properly, you're not going to make any money. And you could end up with, uh, you know, just above average crops and market just perfectly and you're going to nail it. You know, it's, it's just one of those things that there's so much variability in the markets. Uh, you know, you just take a percentage of the highs and lows of the market and that's a huge amount of income. Yeah, and I think one of the things is, is it's really difficult when you're marketing to not have some some little bit of emotion in there, right? I mean, oh, we've no. got emotion in everything else we do <laughs> with these family businesses and, and loving farming as much as most farmers do. It's difficult to not get emotional with your sales and try to think about what got you to that point and why you're selling or, or why not. You, you have to try to remove some of that, right? And I think that's where working with someone like Ty can help yeah. you do that because he's looking at it from the outside looking in. Zach, that's one of the biggest biggest things that I hear as I meet with customers for the first time is I'm emotional, I, I, I need help pulling the trigger. And that's exactly what we're here to help do. Yeah. Well, it's so hard to pull the trigger when the price is going up and you think, well, maybe tomorrow I can make, you know, this much more. And it, it, one of them days it turns around and goes the other direction. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. It, it again all comes back to the management of your farm, knowing your numbers, knowing where mm -hmm. you're at, and maybe being happy making some profit. You know, that's always going to be better than losing, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. I wonder where risk sits in that calculation because I feel like that's. A, a, fundamentally kind of what we're talking about here because it's the difference between like, ooh, do I take the risk of, of waiting out the market? Do I take the risk of hoping that maybe there's there's some high at the end of this that I can reach or do I level out my risk by selling a little bit at a time? How do you guys think about that day to day? That's a, a good question. That's where the data-driven marketing plans here are hopefully going to be uh, a step above in, you know, coming in future years uh, that FBN has the data, we can use that data to, to make more uh, uh, educated sales, I guess. So yeah. we try and educate ourselves with the data and, and uh, make them decisions that way. Yeah. Sarah, risk management is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's up to, to, to Randy and I to work together where I understand what his risk levels are and then help him make decisions and talk over those decisions together, understanding what that risk is or how we can, we'll never eliminate the risk, but we will hopefully reduce it. Absolutely. Last thing, is there any big news or big numbers that you guys are watching going into 2020 as kind of the season gets started? What, what are you paying attention to? I would say I'm looking at the corn bean uh, acres, you know, what's everybody gonna plant? and. Uh, you know, some people say, well, they're going to plant more corn because it's more profitable. Uh, it's like, well, if everyone does that, I want to have beans because I'm going to make up the, the gap the other way. But, yeah. uh, look you know, at it a little more longer term. Yeah. But, you know, you, you got to look at the whole picture and, and your rotations and what, you know, rotations do for your crops as well as the prices. And, uh, you know, I've never been a good at second guessing what crop is going to be the most profitable. So I just try and stay pretty close to my rotation, but yet have a little bit of flexibility in some farms to maybe tweak it one way or the other just a little bit. So. Yeah, yeah I, I would say that even before the, the corn to soybean uh, report comes out in, in March, that we, we would even look at even the January report, see how we ended this year. That's mm -hmm. something that's going to be very important for us to watch and, and in January to see how it will affect then going into the next year. That's probably the number one thing I'm watch, waiting for right now. It's just a waiting game. Absolutely. Randy and Ty, thanks again so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to chat with you. Uh, we're going to let you get back to the conference and, and we're going to get on with our live stream here, but thanks again so much.
We do not guarantee customers will receive specific benefits or value from participating in FBN crop marketing. Results will vary and may result in loss. Terms and conditions apply to qualify for FBN crop marketing offerings. The risk of trading futures and options can be substantial and may not be suitable for all investors. All information, publications, and reports, including this specific material, used and distributed by FBNBR LLC, shall be construed as a solicitation. FBNBR LLC does not distribute research reports, employ research analysts, or maintain a research department, as defined in CFTC Regulation 1.71. This material contains information obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but its accuracy is not guaranteed by FBNBR LLC. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Futures and options trading involves substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Trading should only be done with true risk capital.